Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, I'm right in the thick of doing some tests on a 1992 Toyota MR2 and it's got a, an intermittent fault where uh, the, the car basically grinds to a halt, it stops as if you've turned the ignition off and a warning light comes on the dash showing code 14, the flash code of 14. Now, one of the components that can fail because of that, uh, because of that, or indicated by that code, is the igniter. Now, this is the igniter, and its job is basically to respond to a trigger signal from the ECU and to, to, uh, to break ground, break the circuit on the primary winding of the ignition coil, and therefore we get a spark. It's basically just an electronic switch that operates extremely quickly and can cope with the current flow for the coil. Now, I've been going through various tests on this car and I've got to this point. And now in the Toyota manual it says you cannot test this. You test everything else and if everything else seems good or your wiring's good, your distributor's good, or the, the, the coils and the distributor are all fine, your ignition coil's fine, then it says change this. It doesn't tell you how to test it. I don't like that. So I did some research, and I've never tested one of these before, but I did some research and I found what I needed to do to test this unit. So I thought it might be useful, because there's lots of Toyotas in the world, and this particular unit is common to many, many of the 1990s Toyotas. Um, I'll do a quick video to show you how to test this unit. Now what you're going to need is a 12 volt power supply, and what I'm using is a pretty handy motorcycle battery, but you can use the battery off your car if you want, that's no problem. You're also going to need uh, a continuity tester. Now, most multimeters will have a continuity setting, and uh, I've got one here, which will make a beep whenever we touch the wires together. So that's the setting you want. There you go, look. So it should make a little beep when we get continuity. If you don't have that, then an ohmmeter will be fine, but it's, continuity is easy because it's you know obvious. And lastly, you're going to need a 5 volt power supply. Now, ooh, don't panic. You know, I'm fortunate. I've got a little power supply that I can dial up whatever voltage I want. Um, but you need a DC 5 volt power supply. Now, you could, what you can use is, let's say, three AA batteries wired in series. That's going to give you about 4.5, 4.6 volts. That's fine. That's near enough to test this unit. Okay, without further ado, let me show you how to wire it up. Okay, now I'm fortunate as on the little RAV4 because that now is scrap. I've stolen part of the wiring harness so that I can't short anything out. But you don't need one of these. If you use your little test leads, you can actually just clip onto the relevant uh, connectors on there. Unfortunately, on these, they are labelled up. We've got, uh, we've got there, look. We've got C, EXT, we've got a B, an I, and what's the last one? An F on this one. And just as a close-up for you, that's the part number of the actual igniter that I'm using off the MR2. I've got another one. That's the one off the RAV4. And we'll test both just as so we get a comparison. We know that this is a known good. There were no problems at all with the ignition system on that RAV4 when we pulled it apart. Okay, so I can just plug that in. And the connectors we've labelled up um, 1 to 5 just for ease. Number 1 being this one here at this end and number five at this end, and I've labelled them up on the casting for you. So we'll plug that into there. There we go, nice and tight. So to wire up then, we're only, only going to be using pins two, three, and five. Now, pin three here is your 12 volt positive, so we'll just clag that wire on there, look, from battery positive. And pin two, this one here, is our positive five volts. Now, we're not going to connect that up at the moment. We're just going to actually just touch that to represent the signal from the ECU. So we'll leave that one off for now. Now, the ground from your 5-volt circuit can just go straight onto the casing. We'll stick it over this side here, look. That'll do, onto there. And the ground from your 12 volts can also go on the casing. Easy. All that's left to do is to get your meter. Stick that in there, look, as long as you can see that, it's cool. And it doesn't matter which way around this is connected. One of the connections from your meter to go onto pin 5, that's that one there, 
and the other end which is that yellow one needs to go to ground as well so we can just clip that onto one of these look it's not the greatest connector this one I'm getting, running out of test leads at the moment so we'll stick that on there okay now we'll turn on our 5 volt power supply we've already got 12 volts and our meter is already set to uh, uh, continuity there we go right so now when we supply the positive 5 volts onto pin 2 we should get a beep now don't connect it permanently you just basically brush it across quickly now the thing is the continuity is only momentary it's not there for as long as you hold the wire on it's just a fraction of a second where it completes that circuit and then it goes open circuit again whether you keep the wire on uh, pin 5 or not sorry pin 2 whether you keep the wire on pin 2 or not the meter does make a little tiny bit of a beep you can just hear a bit of a noise in the background but the continuity is not there for long enough for the beeper to really work properly so just to prove to you what's going on I'm going to rig up an oscilloscope now this is an oscilloscope that I've used on other bits and pieces on this particular vehicle and that's going to allow us to see that conductivity over a very very short period of time and prove to us that this unit's working properly here we go okay so just quickly before I pull it all apart so you can hear that pathetic uh, sound again maybe if I bring that up a bit nearer There's definitely a contact going on, but it's, it's, it's pretty ambiguous, isn't it? It's a bit hard to tell. Okay, so we're going to pull that meter out, and let's uh, rig up an oscilloscope. Now, an oscilloscope won't measure continuity, so we're going to need to run a voltage through that circuit, but we can do that. Okay, so basically all that's happening is that wire is going down to ground. So we could, and that's battery negative, and it's basically a switched earth. So we could put uh, a positive, or we could even just do 5 volts, we can get a feed off our little transformer to the oscilloscope and then to here. That'll work. Okay, just turn that on. Right, so we're going to go for 5 volts positive, so we need to steal 5 volts off there. And then we can connect the negative of the oscilloscope onto pin 5. There we go. Now, we know we're going to get 5 volts, so we've got to change the division. Let's go to 5. And well, let's see what happens. We need to change a few more settings yet. Oh, we're definitely getting a reading. Let's just change the uh, the time. Oh, hold on. There we go. Speed up a little bit. Okay. So you can see on the screen, we're getting switching on there. Let's see if we can rest that a bit higher to the camera. Let's see if we can organise that. Okay. Right. One more go for you. Put the lights on. Makes no difference. Okay. Cool. So it's definitely switching. Right. Let's. Uh, that's the Rav Four. So that's the MR Two one. Let's grab the Rav Four one, which we know works properly, and see if that gives us a similar output. 
swap all the wires across. Dum dum dum. Put on there. Unplug the plug. Plug in the plug. There we go. Right. Same again then. Cool. Okay. Well, definitely the same. Quite happy with that. Very similar output. So we can turn that off. Get rid of the oscilloscope. Now, maybe you don't have an oscilloscope. Okay. Well, maybe you will have one of these. Now, this is a logic probe. There's a video that I made a while ago on how to make one of these. They don't look pretty, but man, they do work really well. And they help you to see very fast changes, a lot faster than you can see with a multimeter. This is an ideal test for this. Now, with these, they require a 12 volt power supply, and well, we've got one of those, so we'll just stick that all together. So positive on there, negative on there. So we should have both lights illuminated, just to tell us it's connected properly. And then, off our five volt wire, we can connect that onto there. Okay, let's see what happens to the LEDs when we connect up. There you go. So you can see, no matter how long I keep the wire on for, we get a, a distinct set period of time that that circuit goes continuous. What we're doing is, if you look at the green light, the green light indicates a ground. We're getting a momentary ground. And that's what's happening to the ignition coil primary winding. Cool, okay, so it's definitely switching. We're seeing that. So these are both a pass. Wow, that was pretty cool. I think so anyway, we, uh, we used a multimeter set on continuity where it gives a beep whenever we get continuity to do the test. <sighs> Bit ambiguous. So then we used an oscilloscope and we saw a very distinctive period of time every time that I was connecting the, uh, the the wire on pin 2 to a 5 volt positive supply it was switching and regardless of how long I had the wire connected it switched for a set period of time um, and then because most of you don't have oscilloscopes I used a logic probe and again we could see the green LED on the logic probe energized the red one went out momentarily and it stayed on for a set period of time, an equal period of time, every single time I flipped that wire um, together. So you can test them. Is it a conclusive test? No, I don't think it is. But it is a test, and it indicates that, well, it is sort of working. But there may be problems that are related to heat. Okay. Well, hopefully you found that video helpful. I know lots of people are having these problems with these uh, old igniter packs now, and they're quite expensive to replace. So if you don't get a result, if you can't see it switching, then you definitely know it's not, it's not working as it should, and you will have to replace it. If you can see it switching, look elsewhere. There could be something else wrong with the car. As Toyota says, if you can't find anything else wrong, then you're going to have to change that igniter pack, because that's as good as the test gets, unfortunately. It is for me anyway. Okay, well, my name's Andy Young, and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, and you've been watching my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, if you found this video helpful, then why not subscribe to the channel? Click on subscribe, you'll see a little gear icon. Click on the gear icon, and then you can turn on notifications. And that means that our friends down at YouTube uh, will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. And there's usually three or four every single week covering all sorts of stuff from motorcycle repairs, car repairs, bit of welding, trailer repairs. God, there's heaps of stuff now. Okay, uh, what else? You'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals, but I would ask, please, use the comments section of YouTube as your first port of call, because that's where the videos are. That's where people look for the answers. Okay, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.